guys, today we are in... Yes, I'm sure you can guess this right because this place is so famous. I'm sure you can already recognize this famous blue dome churches. Let's explore the rest of the island together. Hi Curious Gang! Welcome or welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, I'm giving you a very warm hug. My name is Fassi, I live in London but I also love traveling and if you want to see more content around these topics, don't forget to like this video and subscribe because you know, you will get tons of tips all for free. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know before going to Santorini. And of course, we will start with what are the current entry requirements due to COVID, how can you get there, what is the best time to go, how expensive it is, I will tell you what are the best things to do, and of course, give you tons of tips. Let's start with the entry requirements. You need to fill in a PLF document, which is actually the same as it was last year in there you have to write where you will be staying for how long and when exactly are you coming into Greece but if you have any questions always feel free to drop me a comment down below you either need a negative COVID test with my which might be a PCR but they also have started accepting our rapid test and just a tip if you get the rapid test it's actually way cheaper so if i were you i would totally do this if you're vaccinated you don't need uh, you don't need to provide this test and you can also get a uh, screen tested once you land into greece and this is literally what happened with our whole flight which we had from london to santorini they literally tested every single person that was on this flight after you receive your results on your phone and if you're wondering where exactly is Santorini I mean obviously it is in Greece but uh, it is part of the so-called Cycladic Islands and if you have seen pictures from Mykonos, Paros or Naxos they all look very similar because they're part of the same island group and uh, if you're wondering how big is the island it's actually only 76 kilometers which is just a little bigger than the island of Manhattan and how can you actually get to Santorini? Well, if you live in Europe there might be a direct flight from your country. If you live in the US or somewhere else outside of Europe, then you might need to get a flight to Athens and after that either take an internal flight or you can also take a ferry which takes around four to five hours. When is the best time to visit the island? Actually, the high season goes from April until October, but just keep in mind that in the months of July and August, it gets extremely warm. Let me give you a little bit of a short history. Did you know that Santorini is a volcanic island? One of the world's biggest er volcanic eruption happened in the island around 1600 BC and uh, the volcanic eruption consumed the island which caused the middle of it to disappear into the ocean. So the island that we see at the moment is around a half of what the island used to be. And something else very interesting is that it is assumed that the island is home of the legend of Atlantis. And you might be wondering, where is the best place to stay in Santorini? Most probably when you think about the island, you think about this view or this one. And all of these are the views overlooking the volcano and they're situated on the west part of the island. But the thing is, if you go on the other side of the island, they actually have also a lot of a lot of beaches. The cities like Perisa, Kamadi, you don't get these uh, amazing views, but it is actually cheaper and uh, you get the best beaches in Santorini. We stayed in the city of uh, Fira because uh, this is actually the capital of the island and uh, this is also where the bus terminal was so we didn't have a car and for us this was the easiest way to move around the island and also the cheapest. Moving to 
money, cash and how expensive is actually Santorini. You should definitely bring some cash with you. There are many small businesses where you can either not pay by card, spend less than 15 or 20 euros. Oh, and just a tip for you Americans, American Express is not really widely accepted on the island. And if you're wondering how much money you should budget for your holiday, well, the hotels in Santorini average around 130 to 150 euros per night, depending on the area where you're, sta you're staying. If you want to go for a more budget option, you should go more to the beach side of the island, but just to keep in mind, you will be further away uh, from the main areas and attractions. And if you're wondering, what can you get with $100 per night in Santorini, which is actually a lot lower than the average, you can check out this video. Food and restaurants, you would spend around 25 euros per person. And talking about transport, if you decide to go for the bus option like me, then you would spend around 3 euros per day. Uh, but if you decide to go for the car, it would start at around 35 to 40 euros. Let's talk about what are the best things to do on the island. This channel, we don't leave the best for last, we actually start from it because we just cannot wait. The thing that you should definitely do is visit Oya, which I actually learned while I was there that it's pronounced just Ya yeah in Greek. This is literally the most famous Pinterest city. There you can see all the blue dome churches and you can admire the beautiful white houses that are all overlooking the sea and also the volcano. Something which uh, you should definitely not miss is watch the sunset from there because it's really just uh, astonishing. This city manages to be very relaxing despite all the tourists that are there. Once you're in there, of course, it's all great to take photos of these Blue Dome churches, but you can also visit one of them and uh, see a typical Greek Orthodox church. Another city which you can visit is uh, called Imervi. You can find amazing views of the caldera and it's basically as beautiful as yeah. Uh, the houses look very similar, the blue dome churches as well, but it's a little bit more seclusive, it's not as touristy. Another city which you can visit is Fira, where I stayed and uh, I definitely enjoyed it because there you can find the most restaurants, the most shops and usually nightlife. If you go in spring or in autumn or you just love sweating, you can also go for a hike from uh, Fira to yeah, and uh, you will see all these amazing views. And one of the reasons why this place is so famous is because it's actually overlooking the volcano, which is also called the caldera, which is right behind me. Let me show you. And once you're on the island, you will hear everyone talking about the caldera. And you might be wondering, but what is what is this caldera? It is the sea lagoon that was created by the volcano thousands of years ago. And basically all the famous views from Santorini overlook the caldera. And uh, the way to visit the caldera uh, is by taking a boat and uh, you, can, you can have a nice boat trip around. Once you go on this boat tour, you can also go to Amaudi Bay, which is very famous around adrenaline junkies. Something else that you can see only on a boat tour are the hot springs of Santorini. I know they don't look very inviting because of the dark color of the water, but actually this water has therapeutic benefits. And uh, if you understand a little bit more about wine than me, you can also go to a winery tour. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, you learned something new and I also helped you plan your trip to Santorini and if you have any questions or you just want to drop me a comment down below please feel free to do it hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in my next video also from Santorini love you all bye